dude. He's 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 at it again. Armored Skeptic is at it again. He's done another episode of History is a Lie. This one's called Was the Moon Landing Fake? Honestly? Surprise, this is the first time he's floated Was the Moon Landing Fake? 32 minutes. And I haven't watched this. I did scrub for like a... I scrubbed for like right here earlier to see if I could get like a picture for Twitter or whatever. But I really haven't watched this. Uh, I don't know any of the opinions he shares. However, I have looked at the comments a little. Um, I believe they got Stanley Kubrick to film the ho- to film the hoax moon landing, but he was such a perfectionist he made NASA actually send the actors to the moon for filming, uh, which I think is a joke, right? But you can never quite tell with these guys. Uh, Armor Skeptic liked it. That's fine. Um, I went down to another one he likes. I'm a boomer, and I was at home watching the landing with my mum, and I said to mum, wow, mum, a lot of mum, we l- look, we landed on the moon. Look, it's on TV. Mum looked at me and said, you believe everything you see on TV? He liked that. Anyway, he not giving me a lot of hope. Uh, he has been, if you haven't caught up on the series, I mean, we've watched all sorts of these videos on the, I'm not going to go look at it, I guess, uh, on the YouTube channel. If you're already on the YouTube channel watching it and you're like, what, Armored Skeptic? He's a weirdo? He's a weirdo now. He blues in a lot of wacky shit, including a grand unifying conspiracy theory that he happens to be at the center of. Isn't that crazy? All right. Uh, let's keep going. Let's, I guess let's start, but we keep going on the Armored Skeptic saga. Was the moon landing fake? And I wonder if Green Man will make an appearance. NASA is not always honest to us. I've displayed skepticism about the moon landing a few times now. I don't know for sure if the moon landing really happened or if it was all a big lie. Wow. Uh, I'm confident the moon landing happened, man. Like we done, we done seen it. We've we've why, why are we? We've take we just took a cool ass close up picture of Jupiter recently. Uh, Jupiter picture. I don't know. I'm sure it's in the news or something. If I click news, uh, NASA's Juno spacecraft unveils mesmerizing pictures of Jupiter. Look at these mesmerizing pictures of Jupiter. We sent spacecrafts on its 50 second close flyby of Jupiter. Wow, thank you for this ad-laden thing. Anyway, that's a picture of Jupiter. It's really nice. We've done space travel. Uh, the moon is right next to us. We've definitely been to the moon, okay? We've definitely been to the moon. Is he looking better but also scary? Is he looking better? He has a little more color to him, I guess. I don't know if that's a mixing thing. Maybe he's been eating better? I hope he's doing well. I don't wish bad things for Greg. He's just been wacky. I'm not here to prove that either way. All I want to demonstrate in this video is that people have good reason to be skeptical of NASA's claims. People deserve to be skeptical of NASA and the official story of the moon landing. There is a lot of evidence that sometimes NASA creates fake imagery. Sometimes they lie to us. I think NASA's real job is to create and maintain a specific perception about space. I think NASA is in a the perception. business of propaganda. What? The United States government had... <laughs> We're 49 seconds into this, and he says that now NASA is a propaganda wing of the United States? No one's using this wing of the, the United States for propaganda at all. Fake equals composite here. Right, right. Like, like if they have data... And they have a bunch of pictures that they take at super high resolution, so you have to composite them together to make something that we would see as something satisfying to look at, right? Like, if you take a bunch of pictures of Jupiter, for instance, these are composites, at high resolution, and then you just put them together so that it makes one cohesive picture. This isn't fake. This is just multiple pictures. There's just more than one picture. If we had a lens big enough to take that high resolution of an image all in one they would do it it's just a limitation of the fucking of how light works i guess so like (laughs) this is stupid nasa's budget would be so much higher if it was propaganda they don't do anything that's not true i mean we've we've developed lots of technology but like man they just don't do anything like now there was a boom back in the day it was also obviously nasa has lots to do with uh the military and stuff but just leaning into dumb views, or is it brain rushes? No, 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 no. This guy is off his rocker. He believes that he has cracked like a grand unifying theory on conspiracy theories. He had a breakdown about it months ago. 
It's definitely brain roaches, brain palmetto bugs, dude. They fly. Had every reason to lie about the moon landing. It was the Cold War. The space race was really just an extension of the nuclear arms race with Russia, trying to determine which nation built the best technology. It was a major moral victory for the Americans to beat the Russians to the moon. So even if NASA's plan was to actually land on the moon for real, huh? they still had every incentive to lie about their success and cover up evidence about how they did it. The average person will never have access to space. The average person will never get to experience space. Uh -huh. So we have to trust that everything that we're being told is true. Everything that we're being shown is true. And we have to trust that astronauts are simply not sworn to secrecy as part of their role to shape our perception of space. I, what part of space do you think is being kept secret from you? Why did they never talk about the Soviets' incentives to prove we lied? Right, like you'd think there'd be some kind of expose on that. Well, I mean... It doesn't matter. There's no lie. You, have you been to the space program stuff in real life? I ha I actually lived there for a minute, not in Can in in Cape Canaveral, but very close. To I worked in Cape Canaveral, uh, so very close to the Kennedy Space Center. I've seen them launch shit into space with my own eyes. I've watched launches. In fact, it was one of the coolest launches. I actually saw like two or three launches in my time, and the coolest one was a night launch, and uh, you could you could just see this thing. And it, you know, just so fucking bright in the middle of the night, and it lights up the fucking in the dead of night. It lights everything up miles and miles away. You it casts light, and it brightens the street, and it, it was super cool. Um, you can like you know hear them feel the rumble. The base of that um, was rad as fuck, and you could you could literally see it escape the atmosphere. You watch it go. You're like, I can't fucking. It, it's just gone. It left. What lies about space? I, I want to know what he's skeptical about about space. Like, is he worried it's not actually a vacuum? Does he think it might be, like, the properties of space are different? Does he think that what, what, what lies about space have we told? Interesting. I'm not saying that NASA completely fakes their space program. I don't want to say that NASA lies about their capabilities in space. But a lot of the photos and videos that NASA and other space agencies have created over the years have been manipulated or manufactured in some way. A lot of our identity in the West is derived from our understanding of space and our ability to master it with technology. Baby boomer. Do we feel like we've mastered space? Remember where they were the day Neil Armstrong first stepped foot on the moon. That moment changed the world forever. If it were to turn out that the moon landing was faked, even if we had proof that it was not real, it would still be almost impossible to convince most baby boomers because of how deeply ingrained it is into their perspective of reality and humanity. You're making it a boomer thing? That's weird, bro. In one of his books, Bill Clinton said that when the moon landing happened, a simple tradesman told him that he didn't believe that it was real because them fellers on the TV can make anything look real. Bill Clinton admitted after his time in the White House that perhaps that simple tradesman was ahead of his time. What do you think Bill Clinton meant by that? Of all of the conspiracy theories out there, the <laughs> moon landing being... Okay. I gotta look up this Bill Clinton moon landing. All right. Mm. In reality, the fake news concept is old hat. This is from a few years ago, 2017. Talking about Trump. Uh, alternative facts. Suddenly, fake news is serious stuff. Um, in a recent paper published by Europhysics News 4, respected physicists struggled to understand why and how the unprecedented structural failures of the World Trade Center towers in 9-11 occurred other than through a controlled demolition. Oh, wow. This is 9-11 truth or shit, too? Bill Clinton, in his 20, 2004 autobiography, My Life, recounts how an old carpenter told him that he didn't believe in the moon landing for a minute and that them television fellers could make things look like really. He said he wondered once he'd been in power for eight years in Washington whether that old man hadn't been ahead of his time. Is he literally just picking up this? Right here, is this what he's talking about? The drum? 
Did he literally just say exactly this, though? Told him that he had their perspective of reality and humanity. In one of his books, Bill Clinton said that when the moon landing happened, a simple tradesman told him that he didn't believe that it was real because them fellers on the TV can make anything look real. Bill Clinton admitted after his time in the White House that perhaps that simple tradesman was ahead of his time. What do you think Bill Clinton meant by that? Of all of the conspiracy theories out there, the moon landing being faked is the easiest one to get into. Even Joe Rogan used to talk about the moon landing hoax on his podcast to back in the day into. as a champion of the theory, until he eventually invited Neil deGrasse Tyson on his show to debunk it. But you have to remember that NASA has always been sketchy since the very beginning. NASA was literally founded by a Nazi. Werner von Braun. Infamously, after World War II, the United States recruited 88 Nazi scientists mm -hmm. as part of Project Paperclip. Project. Uh, he do be doing Project Paperclip. That guy's literally Adolf Hitler right there. Why is Greg only into the stupid skeptic shit? You know why. Joe Rogan is an intellectual. What are you guys talking about? You guys don't think Joe Rogan is smart? Jamie, look that up. And Werner von Braun was one of them. So there have been a team of Nazis. Oh my God, he's doing it. Look at him. Von Braun was one of them. So there have been a team of Nazis working at NASA since day one. I'm sure that's fine. How do we know that NASA is not secretly designed to support their specific worldview? Oh my I don't god, bro. Want to pretend to have all the answers here? I've never been to space. I'm not trying to convince you of anything specific. I <laughs> Oh no, certainly nothing specific. I just want to demonstrate that people have legitimate reason to be skeptical about what NASA is really doing in space. <laughs> so what the hell is going on with NASA? Um, side note, I ate a piece of chocolate from this place. Tony's chocolate. To Tony's Choco Lonely. Uh, this is cruelty-free chocolate that doesn't use slavery, and it fucking bangs. We get it at Target sometimes. Shit's really good, dude. Anyway, I'm going to save the rest for Sarah, but I ate a few pieces. Very good. Is it weed choco? No, just regular choco. Real, normal choco. That'd be awesome if they said weed choco at uh, Target, though. On the 20th of December 2019, the United States Space Force was officially founded and signed into law Hell as yeah. the newest branch of the United States military. And they like ripped off Star Trek, man? Silly. Now you can't just enlist in the Space Force. No, you have to already be a serving member of the United States military with good standing in order to apply or join. But what is the Space Force exactly? Why would a nation need a dedicated space service? Cur I think it makes sense actually to have some kind of thing, but of course they're using it for military purposes, which, you know. Uh, I, I, I have no problem with the country being invested like they are in nasa in like space exploration and science and stuff to some degree obviously defense makes sense um but you know this is a silly thing space for this this is a silly thing right now like the trump administration putting together space for it's just just goofy Currently, they only have two astronauts yeah, it's property enforcement. in the Space Force, both of which from NASA, obviously. And they only just recently revealed their uniforms in 2021, which... <laughs> in a way... Fake laugh. 
A, the Space Force exists in response to the advanced nature of future warfare. It's kind of just a way to communicate to us that stuff's going on up there now. But the United States has been conducting military operations in space for a really long time now. The NRO, or the National Reconnaissance Office, is in reality the United States secret space agency. One of the functions for NASA is to run as a smokescreen for the NRO. NASA operations are often used as a cover-up for secret NRO missions. A cover-up. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, when you have... Oh, man. To call it a cover-up is, like, so much seedier than it actually is, bro. Like, they just do classified things they're not going to publicly express, and most of it has to do with, like, communications and surveillance. Yeah. Uh, it does, it's not like a conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's just like, oh, yeah, obviously. If the NRO needs to launch a secret spy satellite, for example, mm -hmm. well, then NASA will get carted out into the media to spin some story about a weather satellite or something. But the United States has been pushing to weaponize and militarize space for decades now. For example, infamously, the Star Wars program was being pushed in the media during the Reagan era. Ronald Reagan himself... Ro Ronald Reagan. We, we gotta love the Canadians, dude. Canes and the Wisconsinites. They'd be doing that, too. ...decised the idea of humanity coming together to fight against some outside force. Green man? No, wait. Red man? Wait. What's the bad guy? Green man is the good guy. What's the bad guy? Red fella. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Uh, that's pretty wacky stuff. That is the idea of Ozymandias' plot in The Watchmen, if you've ever seen that, uh, which is uh, maybe why the, it was written, is this speech. Part of it, at least. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Damon. There was never an outside force, obviously. All of this propaganda was spun up as a way to get people more on board with the idea of having... Why can't you say Ray, though? Reagan. It, I mean, he's, he pronounces it Reagan. If he pronounced it Reagan, I would, it would be fine, right? Like, how, how does that happen? How does that occur? You know what I mean? Did you watch the Watchmen HBO series? It was very good. Very good. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was definitely a good modern follow-up. Um, and I'm a fan of the book. I, I actually think the fucking movie has a better, like, logically a better ending. Um, but uh, the book is obviously better. The, uh, well, comics. Graphic novel. Missile launchers in orbit above their head, which is against international law, by the way. There's also the issue of how much money NASA is budgeted from the United States government. NASA costs the United States taxpayer $50 million per day. That ain't shit. That's just not a lot of money. 50 mil per day? That's not, I mean, it's not that much. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously much for, for an individual, but they spend way more than that per day on other shit. NASA does. So a lot of the... Mm -hmm. Media coming out of NASA exists simply to justify the horrendous amount of money that goes into the department. Wouldn't it be funny if that money was being used for something else? No, it'd be better if it was being used for actual science. Anyways, a lot of money is moving under the NASA name. It's not that much. Dude, now I have to do the whole fucking... Give me, give me the calculator. Fifty million 
times 365, 18 billion. Bro, how much are the Dallas Cowboys worth? Go. Dallas Cowboys team value. You could buy two NFL teams. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not that much. It's really not. Like, a year for the American government? It's. I mean, it's obviously more than you or I can budget for, but man. <laughs> Look at the police. Uh, U.S. police budget. $129 billion. Ten times more than NASA. <laughs> Fuck. In reality, NASA is just... These motherfuckers are going to space and learning things about the universe. It's the face of America's various space programs and initiatives. U.S. military, $731 billion, Which is, of course... Fucking... Like 14 times or something? I don't know. NASA is like the PR department for America's science division, curating a specific perception of humanity's presence and capabilities in space. NASA is almost like a propaganda department designed to make it look like humanity is progressing scientifically huh. and make it look like the United States is technologically superior. Uh, I definitely think there's a portion of... American dick wagging that is tied up in our technological advancements, but they actually have the technological advancements. Like, they're not joking. America actually has the technological advancements. Lots of them. Like, <laughs> you better believe the American military is the most advanced shit on the planet. That's actually real. But we now have SpaceX for that today, with Elon uh -huh. Musk taking the role of master of technology theater, selling us propaganda about the future while simultaneously raking in billions of dollars of taxpayer money in grants. He is also a rocket man. And don't even get me started on Jeff Bezos and his penis rocket, and his freaking cowboy hat. Speaking of which... And his cowboy hat, dude... I don't know. I, I can't believe you made Jeff Bezos sound like you're being the dork here. You know what I mean? Like his critique of Jeff Bezos here, the dick rocket, the P. I don't know, man. I don't like Jeff Bezos and his dick rocket, but just the way you delivered that made me be like, well, I don't know. Maybe Jeff Bezos isn't that bad after all. <laughs> I hate that. I don't like your tone, man. <laughs> Maybe we are making space laser to fight the space Cthulhu's. Ooh. Which, do you guys remember Starman when SpaceX launched a Falcon Heavy rocket with Falcon? a Tesla mounted to their payload pod? I did a spoof of that a few years ago. Okay, we're lighting you up in three, two, remember this, remember this one, spoof? launch. This is bad. I hate it. Is it done now? Let's, let's get done with it. Spoof. This is spoofed. This is this is where I'm, I feel spoofed, bro. What was that? Well, the Starman launch. What'd you gave hit us there? A spectacular view of the Earth from space. For those of us that watched it live. We saw that image of Earth in real time as the car floated off into space. It was a magical moment because humanity had never really seen an image like that before. Pale blue dot, bro. I've actually seen this kind of stuff a lot. Is he a dome believer? I don't know. He better not believe in the dome. I actually have seen the Earth in this way many times. I watch space stuff, dude. I have in my other tab. I have this black hole video that I've been meaning to watch after you guys sent it to me last night. Are black holes actually fuzzballs? I don't fucking know. I want to know though. I'm gonna watch it at some point. 
And I got excited that SpaceX might actually show us some of that fun stuff that NASA was never really able to broadcast. Well, strangely enough, during a follow-up launch that was also being broadcast, they cut the live feed early before we got that beautiful, spectacular shot of the Earth from space. Apparently, because it's illegal to broadcast live footage of the Earth from space. Why in the name of all that is good and holy on this green earth would it be illegal to broadcast the world from space? Is it illegal to film the earth from space? It requires a license from the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. There are, however, over 1.5 million clandestine photographs taken from astronauts. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think... NOAA requires it, North Atlantic. Photography, remote, just remote sensing of the Earth from outer space is regular, but it requires a license to be issued in advance. 57. About the licensing of private... Hey, that's where I live. I live in this in this uh, shaped thing. Uh, hold on, no, CR, the website is intended to provide U.S. law, regulation, policy... Card. Of course, with the act of regulations that... License application process... Uh, strongly encourages potential applicants to review and file and uh, a license. Who is required to apply for a license? Any person operating a private remote sensing system within the United States or U.S. Uh, operating a system outside the U.S. is applying for a license. <coughs> the process to apply for a license to photograph Earth from space um, to operate a private remote sensing space system is described in section... Of the, this section outlines license applications and instructions. The person may submit an application for a license in accordance with the specific instructions found in Appendix A. Okay, I actually have to fucking look at how to take a picture of this. Department of Commerce. Uh, this rule has been classified. The rule, this rule has been classified in the major rules. Uh, you may send comment. I need to know. Further information, comment, supplementary information. Article 4. General overview. Problems with the existing regulatory approach. I'm going to have to read this whole fucking document to figure out. Uh, general licensing conditions for all licensing and regulatory affairs inquiries commercial oh here we go there's all sorts of different ways you can do that I set forth in regulation the conditions for operating all systems license are determined by foreign and domestic availability the kill Bingman amendment consistent with the requirements uh, a department or agency of the United States may issue a license for the collection or dissemination by a non-federal entity of satellite imagery with respect to Israel only if such imagery is no more detailed or precise than satellite imagery of Israel that is available for commercial use. Pursuant to that law. So essentially it's an anti-espionage measure. And this one specifically has an Israel uh, thing. Hilarious. A notice of foreign affair agreement is required. Yeah. So they just want you to license this so they can document if you're doing it. But, I mean, like, let's be real. You can take a picture of the Earth. You're on it. What the hell are they hiding? Alexei Leonov uh, was the first person to ever spacewalk outside of a space capsule in 1965. Fuck Later that. that year, the United States performed their first spacewalk as part of the Gemini missions. This footage is possibly the fakest official NASA film ever produced. What? There's an awkward moment where astronaut Ed White floats motionlessly out to the end of his tether, and right then, as he looks at the camera, he very clearly turns his entire helmet to salute. This is the first last and only time in history that an astronaut has been seen turning his helmet in space. This should be impossible. Pressurized spacesuits are not designed to have articulating helmets. 
I don't know if that's true. All right. Uh, space walk helmet turn. Spacewalk underway. Amazing helmet cam footage of the Earth. No. Cause, I mean, we've seen other spacewalks. Can astronauts' helmets turn? One inconvenience is... Astronauts call us the alligator head. Uh, Could astronauts ever swivel their head independently? How is Ed White able to turn his head in the spacewalk? Fuck, dude. Let's go. Holy fucking shit. Quora. Finish. Stop it. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Idiot. All right. Dude, Quora is a fucking joke. Holy shit. I literally just went here to see if they were talking about it. For some reason, Quora doesn't have the correct answer. It's short and concise. Uh, basically, the spacesuits evolved in some cases. We are radically redesigned, re-engineered during this very space program. The first Mercury spacesuits were slightly modified aircraft pressure suits. Obviously, that wouldn't work for EVA, so they updated and redesigned them for Gemini. The suits changed multiple times. Um, fortunately, a better page this answer. 404. This 404s. Uh, Gemini spacesuit had a neck bearing to allow the helmet to swivel. Jonathan Miller explains it in his answer here. There are two basic approaches to spacesuit design. Wait. The Stewart? Is this the one? Let's get those ads off, maybe. There we go. There are two basic approaches. The first is an integral helmet where it's literally sewn to the torso, like in the Orlon, which is this. Such a helmet can only turn with the suit because it's part of the suit. Second is a separate helmet we're all familiar with the movies and NASA publicity shots. This is conspicuous for prominent neck ring, as Jonathan Miller reminded me. Early spacesuits didn't have, in fact, a bearing that permitted the neck ring to turn. Early spacesuits did, in fact, have bearings that permitted the neck ring to turn. There are a couple of reasons that wasn't carried on later designs, however. You have to have someone attach the helmet to the wearer's head, and this poses comfort, safety, and doffing and donning difficulties, uh, taking off and taking putting on. Uh, in the Mercury spacesuits, this was accomplished by the prominent ear mufflers visible below. Oh, so they could turn their heads. He's literally doing it. Um, wow. Even at low pressures used in spacesuits, the seal is about 500 pounds of force pressing on it. Allowing the seal to turn poses additional engineering difficulties and hygiene issues. It makes no difference in the suit that's going to be custom fit by experts and then only used once. Things are different if you're going to be the moon or if you plan to use a helmet for months or years on the ISS. If a bit of debris gets caught in a stationary seal, the most likely outcome is that the helmet fails a future test and is repaired. If a piece of debris slices an O-ring while turning a helmet during EVA, you die. If debris works its way into the bearings that allows the system to turn a wedge and in an opportune position during a mission what then uh if you need a peripheral vision there is much simpler solution u.s astronauts from apollo have worn bubble helmets to and place the eva Pfizer assembly over it when needed so that's yeah so there you go uh actually the suit did have neck articulation literally there's a bearing in the neck that was a quick google that i did not researching for my youtube video that i'm making the barest of effort. And the astronaut's head is not usually fixed to the inside of the helmet to allow them to... By the way, I'm not a big, like, debunker of this moon landing shit. I don't actually watch moon landing as fake content ever. Um, that's how easy it is to debunk this. Do this anyways. <laughs> but even if this suit was designed to allow the helmet to turn, the Basic air research. pressure against the seals in the neck no. would create far too much friction to allow the helmet to turn. Ast no. Astronaut Ed White is basically in a glorified flight suit. He's like in pajamas. He's wearing a balloon that's ready to pop. Yes. And he made it. It's fine. But yeah, I mean, this is a this is a flight suit. It's a modified flight suit for the first spacewalk, and then they modified that after. Yep. The last thing you should be able to do in a suit like this is turn the head. 
and they stopped doing that. When talking about another spacewalk with astronaut Michael Collins, NASA was caught faking imagery again when they re-released a photo of the astronaut that had already been previously published. Only this time, they blacked out the background and reversed the image. This is clearly the same photo again. I don't know that it is clear. Looks like the other side of this and he's holding it the same. Like the face looks different. It could be, I guess. Uh, I guess the strap looks very similar. Go. This could be that. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't think this means that the, the other guy's head couldn't move. Uh, it's also like prototypes are flawed and not the final products. Yeah, it might. I, it looks like two different. I mean, this is the only thing that looks similar. And they don't look 100% the same. Maybe, I don't know, old Photoshop. Just altered to make it look like the astronaut is in space. I mean, they could have, yeah, maybe. I don't know. The original image was taken here on Earth in a studio during an equipment test. A lot of the Russian footage that Calling was it produced a studio during the is space funny. race era was faked or altered in some way as well. A lot of the media that came out of Russia during that time was just straight up propaganda. The very first man in space was Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Gagarin. The very first person in space was Yuri Gagarin. So he, a Soviet. he just found that out. Uh, is that true? I thought the first guy in space was sent off into smithereens. Or maybe that was a guy later on. The first dog was Laika. Aww. There's actually a, a great song named Laika by Arcade Fire. Yet cosmonaut. Pretty much all of the footage that we were shown of Yuri preparing to take off on his historic launch was clearly filmed on an earlier day as preparation. The cockpit shots, for example, are too well lit. The controls are not even operating. He's uh, it's okay to do pickup shots for this when on the day of launch you're not actually going to go. I I believe that the Soviet Union shot him into space. Uh, there's no reason to believe that that didn't happen. It's just flipping dead switches. All right, there are a million reasons why our international space agencies could be faking imagery in this way. I mean, maybe... No, not the one that fell to Earth. There was a guy that fucking got sent out into space, right? He might have fallen to Earth later. But he was like... He was like screaming and shit. The Russian... Maybe they are conducting those missions exactly the way that they're telling us, but for some reason it's impossible to produce reliable footage while in space, right? Maybe the radiation of open space damages film or interferes with cameras in some way. But what if that's not the reason that they lie to us? What if they're trying to hide something? What, <laughs> what if, if they don't want us to know something? Pe uh, cosmonaut crashed into Earth crying in rage. Is this that? Uh, cosmonaut is circling the globe, convinced he will never make it back to Earth. He's on the phone with Alexei. High official, so he's crying because he too thinks Cosmonaut will die. Remains? Sheesh! What the fuck off? Uh, the space vehicle is shot like constructed, running dangerously long, filled with parachute, blah, blah, blah. It's destroying the intimate kind of 1967 death of Russian cosmonaut appears in new book. Yeah, this is it. This is the one. Yeah, horrifying. I mean, at least he came back to the Earth. Not that you want to, like, die in a fireball on Earth, of course, but I think, like, better than sent off into the void personally people have long questioned the validity of the live feed footage we get from the international space station's orbit one time george bush senior was taking a tour around nasa crab, and near crab, the crab. beginning of the video as they're walking through the iss control center you can see a feed on their screen that's supposed to be depicting an astronaut that is currently in space during the filming of this video but for some reason instead of showing him in the open hallways of the 
International Space Station, which astronauts usually have as their background in their videos. Uh -huh. This footage shows a gridded blue screen like you would find in the background of a studio that uses special effects. This is... Have you not seen videos from the ISS? Dude. ISS astronaut videos. I don't know. Let's just see if we can find... It's not a spacewalk. Uh, I don't even know what the fuck I'd look for here. But I feel like I've seen this pattern in the ISS multiple times. May have the cool... Uh, I do like I this... Filled out of the I've seen this before. Hands. And if I let go of the cloth carefully... You can't... You literally can't fucking make this up. Look at this. Like, it's... It's awesome. Anyway, Canadian Space Agency. We kinda Do they have any... This is the Canadian Space Agency. Oh, man, they're not going to have any interior shots. Anyway, I bet if you scrubbed for interior shots of the ISS and maybe some... Uh, some uh, very dedicated person in chat might want to do that or knows about it or consumes a lot of the ISS content. Uh, but I, I feel like I've definitely seen this before. I've seen endless footage coming from the International Space Station. Never seen this. And this time that Bush toured the ISS Control Center is the one and only time I've ever seen a CGI placeholder screen in the background of one of their shots. A C it's not a CGI placeholder screen. <laughs> People have speculated that this is proof that NASA uses CGI and augmented reality to fake what happens on the International Space Station. Yeah, Maybe the astronauts that were shown on television are simply actors, and what's actually happening on the International Space Station is something much more secretive. Did you say that all the astronauts are actors, Greg? The astronauts? We're in the shit. It's it's back. He's he's back to rock bottom. Fuck. But people on the internet have been pointing out anomalies from International Space Station footage for like 15, 20 years already. I wanted to do a video years ago highlighting Fuck my favorite examples. Bicycles. It looks like one of those things they put up to measure travel and time and distance. Like they had a Mythbusters. I don't know. But most of that footage has been wiped off of YouTube. It used to be so much <coughs> easier you, to find stuff on this. So instead, I found a clip of an American bringing these points up on the record to demonstrate what I'm talking about. There's now clear evidence of NASA using numerous methods to grossly mislead the public about astronauts being on the International Space Station. Brevard County Commission, let's go! You slip there. During interior ISS scenes from NASA's own live feed, the use of wires, harnesses, green screens, and virtual reality have been detected to achieve the appearance of a weightless environment. Why do you think that this makes it legitimate? So they went to a community council or council, city council fucking, or I guess county commission meeting. And you think because this guy wore a suit, this is like an official briefing? This is just a random citizen that's a flat earther or whatever. Examples of this include astronauts fading in and out of the screen, green screen glitches, grabbing objects that aren't really there, pulling on invisible wires, getting tangled in their harnesses, and even astronauts appearing out of thin air. This begs the obvious question. If they're really up there, why are they doing video transitions? Are they using Hollywood techniques to fake the footage? Outside the International Space Station, during spacewalks, air bubbles have been recorded on numerous occasions. How is it po That's not an air bubble. possible for air bubbles to be present in the vacuum of space? I once questioned astronaut Scott Kelly about this phenomenon. His body language and answers only created more questions. In 2013, astronaut Luca Parmitano nearly Amazing. drowned during a spacewalk when his helmet filled with water. This happened again just last year. Air bubbles, helmets filling with water, and drowning. Are they in space or are they underwater? Now what's really interesting is that they- Are they underwater? <laughs> Brother. You know this guy? He's wildly anti-Semitic. They train for spacewalks in an underwater pool with a complete ISS replica. Now, surely they aren't filming these spacewalks. They're calling them water bubbles. They do know that the ISS and the astronauts are moving through space, right? 
They're not stationary. They look like they're not moving that much relative to the Earth, but they're fucking orbiting the fucking Earth. Moisture and stuff comes off of these things and goes into space. There's They're in space water. I mean, literally fucking... There's ice and shit in space. This is crazy. There's also stuff orbiting the Earth. ...in an underwater pool and then editing them to appear if they're in space. Because that sure would be something, wouldn't it? There are countless lunar mission anomalies. I don't really... So, who's what's this guy's name? Do you know that guy's name? Devin Wonka? You said you knew about this I want to go through them all, mostly because most of them have already been debunked. But there are still a handful of concerns that have never really been satisfyingly answered about the original Apollo missions. I guess they're getting confused about the water training because it approximates a low gravity setting. Yeah. First of all, how the hell did their film for their Hasselblad cameras survive traveling through the Van Allen belt? Look how good these photos are. The astronauts on the Apollo missions used large Hasselblad film to take these photos, and the radiation from the Van Allen belt should have riddled this film with dots, making it useless before they could even take these photos. Why do you say that this should have happened? You don't think they had any protection for this film? Literally lead. They used lead. Hell, the Van Allen belt should have been lethal to the astronauts themselves. How they know about this. How the hell did the Apollo astronauts- You think you can't go into space because of this? Do you actually think that you can't go into space, Greg? Astronauts travel through the Van Allen belt without experiencing any adverse effects. I mentioned this in a previous video, and I said that NASA didn't know about the Van Allen belt yet. They had theorized about the belt, but nobody had ever interacted with the Van Allen belt until Apollo 11 passed through it twice, once on their way to the moon and again on their return trip. Yet not a single Apollo astronaut has ever mentioned a single thing about their experience passing through the Van Allen belt. <sighs> what? happens when you pass through the Van Al Allen belt. Well, uh, uh, Apollo astronauts going through the Van Allen belts received a very low and non-harmful dose of radiation. In 2013, the Van Allen probes detected a transient third radiation belt which persisted for four weeks. <sighs> How did Na NASA get past the Van Allen belts? Basic ballistic, follow ballistic trajectory so they pass through the belts very quickly, which reduced the risk from this population to very low. Apollo missions took only about 4.5 days to get to the moon. <sighs> How did Apollo astronauts survive radiation? The Apollo spacecraft crossed through the Van Allen belts rather quickly, and then once outside those belts, they were lucky. Uh, they were lucky there was little solar activity. The radiation exposure for each Apollo crew is shown in the table. The exposure was low, considerably below li limits. This is on a Quora thing again. We can look at it. Uh, limited exposure time, protective gear, low ex levels of radiations. Unlike Earth, the moon does not have protective atmospheric or magnetic uh, field to shield from the solar radiation. However, the levels of radiation on the moon's surface are relatively low compared to other space environments, such as in Earth, Earth's orbit or in Mars. Shielding it to, on the spacecraft, the spacecraft used for the Apollo missions had thick walls made of aluminum and other materials to protect the astronauts from radiation. The astronauts also had a designed storm shelter on board in case of a solar flare and other radiation events. Timing the mission, the Apollo missions were carefully plan to avoid periods of high solar activity which can increase radiation levels in space overall while the astronauts were exposed to some radiation during their time on the moon the combination of limited exposure time protective gear the shielding of the spacecraft helped to minimize potential risks <sighs> easy a simple goog Many years later, a group of astronauts traveled to about a 600 kilometer Gary Poindexter. Thanks, Father. orbit above the surface of the Earth. And even though they never entered the Van Allen belt, many of the astronauts complained of disorientation. Apparently, the astronauts kept seeing flashes of light even when they had their eyes closed. Radioactive particles were whizzing through their head. That can happen and their eyes were interpreting that as light. If yeah. that had happened to a roll of- That can happen on Earth. 
film, <laughs> when developed, it would be covered in white dots. Unless you put their head in a lead box. So you'd imagine that if that many Apollo astronauts had traveled through the Van Allen belt that many times, that at least one of them would have complained about adverse effects. No. We just went over this. When that later crew in the space shuttle experienced flashes of light in high orbit, CNN published an article in response to that experience. The radiation belt surrounding Earth may be more dangerous for spacewalking astronauts than previously believed. Scientists say the phenomena known as the Van Allen belts can spawn killer electrons when the Earth's magnetic field changes. These electrons can spawn when electrons that are being studied could have an important effect not only on satellites, which has happened in the past, but could also affect the astronauts by creating large doses of radiation that could influence their health. The electrons can penetrate through various materials, including spacesuits, and can pass through, in fact, the walls of the space station. And one time it kind of sounded like NASA almost admitted that they'd never sent humans through the Van Allen belt before. Before we can send astronauts into space, space on Orion, we have to test all of its systems. We are headed 3600... What? Into space on Orion. How is that an admission of not going to space? 100 miles above Earth, 15 times higher from the planet than the International Space Station. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. Yeah, man. It is funny that he is showing this as evidence of, of this not working. Yeah, man. Did you guys know that we can experience radiation as humans and not fucking die immediately of it? I mean, obviously, we don't want a lot of it. We're little fragile things, but... We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. My favorite anomalies come from video footage of the astronauts operating on the moon's surface itself. Uh -huh. The best of which are examples of astronauts being caught on wires. There are a few shots that the camera seems to pick up a really bizarre lens flare where for some reason the light goes straight up. In what? Let's see. I'm trying to see a wire right there. So this looks like a <laughs> this looks like a lens. This looks like it shined from the source of like the helmet. Right up. Yeah, it looks like it's it looks like he turns his helmet and it creates a shine back toward the camera that picks up on the top of the lens. This happens in with my glasses driving at night with like cars on the road up instead of sprawling out yeah, it's possible that that's a unique effect of that specific lens that they're using but it's also possible that that light is revealing that those astronauts are hanging from a wire i disagree that that's possible maybe that footage was filmed in a studio and maybe that wire is holding up the astronaut maybe. to simulate one sixth earth's gravity you know how you put single wires on the top of people's heads to uh, fake anti-gravity measures. People have long theorized that filmmaker Stanley Kubrick helped NASA film the moon landing footage <laughs> using movie magic. We're doing the, oh, of course it was in the comments. We're doing the Kubrick thing. Magic to simulate space. A lot of these techniques he would have practiced and perfected while making <sighs> 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. And years later, Stanley Kubrick used one of NASA's special low light lenses to film one of his movies. So it's possible that Stanley Kubrick had a special relationship with NASA. It's not. Why are we, po why are we saying it's possible? <laughs> you use ballpoint pens. You have connections with fucking NASA, dude. <laughs> Holy shit, he has microchips. He has microchips in his, in his computer. He's, he's got NASA going on. 
Oh, funny story. One time, an old lady was arrested for trying to sell a moon rock that was gifted to her late husband by Neil Armstrong himself. NASA claimed that either the moon rock was fake or she had stolen it. Apparently, she... Uh... Because they don't give moon rocks to people, maybe? I don't know. She had been keeping this moon rock as a memento of her husband, but she decided to sell it online one day to try to make ends meet. Well, apparently, it's illegal to sell moon rocks. Nobody knew this. No, no, obviously, nobody knew this. The police didn't even warn her that she was doing something wrong. Nobody told her, even though America. there was ample opportunity. No, no, no. Instead, the police ran a sting on her. They pretended to... Are you... Uh, yeah, fuck the police. A cab. Be they should have... She should be able to have a moon rock, in my opinion. Buyers of the rock, and when she showed up to sell it, they arrested her. America. <laughs> what the hell is that all about? What quality? I can't imagine she stayed in prison. What yeah. could a moon rock possess that make it too precious to sell? It's just a rock, right? Surely we should be allowed to examine a simple moon rock in order to determine its validity. Too precious to sell? What? Well, I don't, think that's, I don't think that's what they're upset about. I mean, why can't we examine a moon rock? Moon rocks are real, right? Well, another funny oh, story. No. A moon rock that was gifted to Holland by the Apollo astronauts was determined to be petrified wood. You heard me. A moon rock that was given to Holland by the Apollo astronauts was examined, and the results said that it was petrified wood... So we gave Holland a fake moon rock? Imagine. From right here on Earth. God, that's awkward. But moon rocks are real. Trust me. There was also some really funny lunar or... <laughs> uh, moon rocks, weed, a lot of moon rocks. Moon rocks, weed, moon rocks. Moon rocks, moon rocks, uh, NASA, I'm going to type in NASA, lunar rocks and soil, we have lunar rocks and soil, our collection maybe, lunar sample facility, where's the lunar sample facility, please join us for a tour, I'm going, Lunar Sample Laboratory Tour. You can go hold a moon rock with some gloves or something. Pristine Sample Lab. Sheesh. Look at them. They keep them, they keep them in special little cases and shit. They have catalogs of all the rocks. You can see rocks right there. Look at that rock. That's a pretty cool fucking rock. You can see in the videos of them collecting these rocks too. Look at that cool rock. That's a goddamn go rock right there. Uh, I know this is, of course, from NASA, uh, but nonetheless, I mean, it, it, this is some pretty boring propaganda if this is the, the secret is actually moon rocks are fake. We made up that there's rocks on the moon because actually it's cheese. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. This lie is so mundane. What would the what would the benefit of not having real moon rocks be? Everyone knows the moon is made of cheese. I am not surprised America, the government, didn't give a foreign country in the during the Cold War of a real moon rock. Just not at all surprised. Orbiter footage of the Apollo crew that can only be found in one documentary? A funny thing happened on the way to the moon. In this footage, it appears that the Apollo crew faked the size of the Earth from their perspective, making it look much smaller than it should, by putting a cover over their window, and instead of having the camera right up against the glass, while filming it, they had the camera on the opposite side of the pod. I don't know what that... Wh 
we're, we're, we're upset with the filming techniques of the Apollo crew. Uh, they should have brought Stanley Kubrick with them, obviously. They fucked up. So it's possible that the Apollo 11 crew never left low Earth orbit. How? Though it's also possible that that documentary completely hoaxed that footage. There are a lot of hoaxers in conspiracy communities. A really important point to bring up is that NASA lost all of the telemetry data from Apollo 11, meaning they have no record of the flight. The most important rocket launch in human history and they lost all the telemetry data? Well, that's not all. They also lost all of the original film footage from the broadcast when they accidentally re-recorded over the tapes. Oopsies. We never got to see that footage with our own eyes. Nobody did. There was no independent media coverage of the Apollo landing. Instead, NASA projected the footage of the live feed onto a screen in their own public viewing room. And yeah, man, what did you want them to do? Stream it? It was the 60s. Why does he keep... <laughs> There was definitely independent coverage of, like, the launches and shit. I'm sorry they couldn't get NBC uh, cameras in the fucking pod with them or something. I don't know. And the media was yeah, only was just in TV. It was around back then, right? Allowed to record that screen with their own individual news cameras. So instead of getting crisp live footage, we got highly degraded second generation footage of the moon landing. So if they faked the moon landing, so the people in the room saw it. You just said no one saw it. Ending. This is just one more way that they could have covered up all of the imperfections in their studio footage. What did? You, what other way did you want them to get this footage? I feel like the limitations of the technology on television is probably the problem here, man. There's also an inconsistency with the way that the astronauts move around on the moon's surface from mission to mission. On Apollo 11, the first landing, the astronauts were awkwardly waddling around the surface, uh -huh. very slowly moving across the terrain. But yeah. in later missions, like Apollo 14, the astronauts were very confidently jumping around. How doesn't this make sense to him? They got more confident with more experience? That's crazy, man. Weightlessly flying across the surface. It's almost as if there are two different sets of physics for each individual mission. No, like man. the rules for the physics are different. No, the man. original crew of the first Apollo mission had their doubts about the possibility of their mission's success. The captain of the crew, Gus Grissom, even called the rocket a lemon. Gus Grissom hung a lemon from the door of the capsule and said that the rocket would never make it to the moon. Sadly, the original crew died when the capsule caught fire during a test. Astronauts Neil yeah. Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were chosen to replace the original crew. And Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the very first men to ever walk on the moon. Yeah. The very first try. No failed attempts. There were several failed attempts? There are famously failed attempts. It was Apollo 11. It was... They died from... <laughs> This is this is such a well documented thing and it's so weird to be like no nah, they didn't. It's like they fucking did though. <laughs> Do you think we don't know the first team died? Everyone knows about the di No mistakes. Wow. The only no, that's not covered up. Go. Why is he pretending that's covered up? Can Craig explain Apollo 13? He cannot. 
Apollo mission on record to fail was Apollo 13, though that crew managed to survive and return home to Earth safely. Other than that, Apollo 1 happened because they had a pure oxygen environment in the cabin? Yeah. Every other Apollo mission succeeded, with astronauts walking on the moon. It's just mathematically very implausible. It's not. It is not mathematically implausible. Have you not seen the process by which this happened? <laughs> it's 11, Apollo 11. Right after their return to Earth, the Apollo 11 they literally did the crew right. looked totally disengaged and disinterested when giving a press conference about their trip to the moon. They should be excited, but instead they're just sad. This footage is depressing and confusing. What's going on here? Why are they acting so broken? <sighs> Better idea of the detail available with the 70 millimeter. That interested us most, in particular the the uh, things that occurred on and about the moon. We will use a number of films and and slides, which most of you have already seen. This guy seems nervous. I would like. I wonder if the the demeanor changes as we get further in. They get more comfortable talking about stuff. Rotating the the field of view until the crosshair superimposed on the star. This would give us the uh, angular measure. We had uh, some difficulty at first uh, getting the uh, pole of the flag to remain into the surface. Uh, in penetrating the surface, we found that uh, most objects would uh, go down about five, maybe six inches, and then it would meet with a uh, gradual resistance. Uh, at the same time, there was not much of a supporting force on either side, so we had to lean the flag back slightly uh, in order for it to uh, to maintain this position. That's such an inter That's such a small detail that like would be hard to make up. Where he's like, oh, yeah, we had problems, like, actually sticking it down in there because, you know, this the sediment, sort of silty uh, debris dust that settled on, on the moon. Um, it's pocked in all the all the craters and stuff. And, you know, the material has been ejected and then eventually recollected back on. So it's covered in fine dust, right? And uh, it has about five or six inches of that shit. And then it hits hard fucking rock because that's all this thing is. It's a big rock. Fascinating. Let's see. Particularly on our first experience with the use of that backpack on the lunar surface, we were interesting, interested in conserving a good bit of margin in case we More had animated. difficulty with closing the hatch or repressurizing the limb or had any difficulties with getting uh, the uh, systems operating again in the normal fashion inside the cockpit. Uh, Colonel Aldrin and Mr. Armstrong. Uh, in other regions near the edges of these craters, uh, we could find that the foot would, would sink down maybe two, three, possibly four inches. And in, in the slope, of course, the uh, various edges of the footprint would might go on up to six or seven inches. And uh, compacting this material would, would tend to uh, produce a slight sideways motion as it was compacted on the material underneath it. So uh, we feel that uh, you, you cannot always tell just by looking at the terrain what the exact resistance will be as your foot sinks into a, a point of prone contact. So one must be quite cautious in, in moving around in this rough terrain. So talking about why they had difficulties walking, this is fascinating. I've never actually looked at this footage in my life. I've never seen Apollo 11 press conference footage. This is the whole thing. I looked it up quickly. Uh, anyway, he looked fucking nervous at the beginning of this, and this is when this footage is taken from. As they continue, it's pretty obvious that... They don't seem as nervous, but it's, it's I mean, this is a uh, long fucking time rain. to sit on national TV when you never do it, you know? When you never are on camera, being on camera, taking, uh, look at this room, man. National press conference Program alone. filled with fucking people. The whole world's watching. How are they going to be comfortable with this? this is, what the fuck? Anyway, uh, they standing fucking ovation at the end of it. 
there's no reason to be skeptical about this event. I mean, they talk about the minutia of experiencing on the moon. I actually want to watch that now. It's fascinating. I've never heard them talk about, like, just the little stuff, like, the things you wouldn't think about, like, the the way that you can't rely on your footsteps necessarily because it's got different densities of compacted dust on top of it, uh, depending on what's underneath it. That's fucking interesting. I don't know. These people are, I mean, just, just crazy. People have suggested that these astronauts are suffering from guilt and shame <coughs> for having to tell America lies. We're upset about for the pretending to be heroes. They literally get a standing ovation in this shot. Neil Armstrong always acted very evasive when asked questions about the moon landing. He never wanted to talk about it. During one interview, when asked about a specific experience in space, Neil Armstrong allegedly jumped up out of his seat, ran out of the room, and began vomiting in the hallway. Oh, interesting. Uh, here's a 60 minute segment. 60 minutes. Perched atop of Saturn, and he didn't. Armstrong's entire life had prepared him well, starting with a childhood fascination with flight. He earned his pilot's license at 16 before he learned to drive. There. But then I thought about are things they can laugh about on the crater covered with very large rocks about the size of automobiles. That was not the kind of place I wanted to try to make the first landing. Armstrong overrode the autopilot and looked for a safe place to land. But the detour cost them precious fuel and they were about to run out. A worldwide television audience of nearly a billion people was on the edge of their seats. And so was CBS. Can you imagine a billion people watching the same fucking thing at the same time? Sheesh, dude. To zone Walter Cronkite. We couldn't resist reuniting the former anchorman with the former spaceman. A billion. That's crazy. Whole fucking world watches this shit. Anyway. Uh, obviously real. This could be a stress response, or it could suggest that the crew underwent some form of hypnosis or mind wipe after their mission. <laughs> what? It is it, it, puking is not evidence of a mind wipe or hypnosis. Greg, no! That's the craziest shit. The fuck? Puking is evidence of bad tacos, not hypnosis. Neil Armstrong may have been trained to have an adverse reaction when asked to recall specific memories about his mission. NASA brainwashed him into thinking puke, puke, puke every time. Is that what you're saying to me? Are you telling me that NASA brainwashed Neil Armstrong like a Pavlov dog situation to reflexively vomit when asked about the moon. What are we a skeptic of? Is this skepticism? This is the meme now. I know it's a little backwards, but is this skepticism? Is, is this skepticism chat? Either way, since that first press conference, Neil Armstrong has never done one single on-camera interview. Ever. This is, I just showed an on-camera interview one second ago. Literally one second ago. This is, uh, what, what, what? 60 minutes. I just showed it. Rewind. Unbearable. Uh, we were following the flight plan. And, Walter uh, Cronkite. Later, while flying an experimental experience and nerves of steel yes. earned him an eight. The ghostly image was oh, beyond words turned out i didn't have anything to say at all except <laughs> whoa oh boy oh boy <laughs> perfectly speechless the ghostly image was oh, beyond words armstrong oh, paused on the bottom rung of the ladder and, step off the limb. and 
planted his left boot on the lunar dust. There you go. Anyway, he says the thing. Neil Armstrong has always avoided talking to the media. Yeah. In fact, the few times that he was on camera, he said some really weird and cryptic stuff. During the space age, we have increased the knowledge of our universe a thousandfold. Today we have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you, we say we have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. Truth's protective layers? What the hell is that supposed to mean? A lack of knowledge? Like, the physical limitations of human beings and in the ability to traverse into space safely and reliably in a way that we can do more material research? How is this like this? How is this video so bad? He said that at the White House, by the way. But that, what the fuck is, what, this wasn't, that doesn't imply that the moon landing wasn't real at all. Buzz Aldrin, too, became a massive alcoholic after the moon landing, only later in his life getting his act together so he could go out into the media to describe his experience. One time, Buzz Aldrin even punched a documentary filmmaker for- For saying it was fake? Making him swear to God that he walked on the moon. Why don't you swear in the Bible that you walked on the moon? This is a hotel. We'll call right, we, the police. We, we pay. Does Come on in not, here, we'll call the police. Do you like that? Why don't you swear in the Bible that you walked on the moon? You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you- He's been harassing him the whole time. He didn't. Calling the kettle black if I ever thought of it. Saying Will I misrepresented myself. you get away from me? You're a coward and a liar and a thief. So clear- you blasted, you're a coward and a liar. Clearly Buzz Aldrin was experiencing a lot of stress about this. Something about the blasted, moon landing dude. experience- Punch flat earthers in my opinion, I agree. Changed these Punch men into earthers. a depressed, recluse shell of their former selves. Buzz Aldrin has also- How are you going to tell someone they're a shell of their former self? Self, Greg. Also been very careful with the language that he uses, never directly saying that he landed on the moon or that he walked on the moon. In fact, on a few occasions, he's been caught using coded <coughs> language that suggests that he never went to the moon. This is the same kind of coded language that I heard Bob Gimlin use when he was describing his experience seeing the Sasquatch. I know that I made a video debunking this years ago, but one time he told a little girl, we didn't go there. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and, and that's the way it happened. And this wasn't even the only... What? That's not what he's... What he's saying dumb shit. He's not, he's not very, he's not very good at talking to kids. He's saying, because we didn't go there, that's what happened. They didn't go there, that's why. I think I know why they didn't go. They didn't go, though. Yeah, man. This is not him saying that I didn't go. He's not saying I didn't fucking go to the moon. Only time Buzz did this in an interview. Perhaps Buzz Aldrin is trying to be a good Christian and avoid lying. So none of this fake footage that we've discovered of space actually proves yeah, just got that yeah. NASA has never been to space. I believe that they have actually been to space. But I think people have proven that NASA doesn't always show us what they're actually doing in space. Again, I'm not trying to prove that the moon landing was fake. I just want to demonstrate that people deserve to be skeptical that the official story is true. <laughs> I'm not saying they didn't go to the moon. I'm just very, I think it's fine to be skeptical about it being true. <laughs> but you're, my, I, I literally just had to look up information about it, man. We've seen, we've seen these things. It's all real. It's so, it's so weird to be to be skeptical about things that 
I've never understood this one because what's the what's the fucking lie? Space race, Cold War, cope lie. We couldn't actually get there. We're uh, we're coping. That just doesn't seem reasonable considering how many times they failed in the lead up. You know, they had fucking PR disasters that almost benched the entire program. And then they finally got to the moon, you know? People deserve to be skeptical of the photos and the videos that we've been shown. We deserve to be skeptical of the stories that we're told. We deserve to be skeptical about what's really up there. So what is really up there? What are you implying that is up there that isn't that you don't see? I'm fascinated in in the allegations against space and its reality. I would love to know what uh, Greg thinks isn't actually happening in space that we think is happening or vice versa. Oh, I ask once again, why does NASA fake it? I don't think NASA fakes the moon landing even a little bit. Uh, all the things that you would expect on the way to the moon kind of happened. If I mean, you know, they had a lot of difficulties. There was obviously, uh, you know, it was like a political, like politicians had to fight for it to be a thing. Uh, this is just ignorance. This is just genuine ignorance, man. The force field. Oh, yeah, he thinks there's a force field up there or something, right? There's a, maybe the firmament. Anyway, uh, armored skeptic has lost his mind. It's gone. He doesn't have he doesn't have a reasonable bone in his body now. It's all over. That's it. That's it for us. That's a guy just straight up saying he's not doing it, but he he I mean, you can only lampshade so much. That he ended it with like, why do they lie to us? I'm not saying this isn't real, but why do they fucking lie about everything else? I mean, it's clearly trying to be say well i don't think it was real the moon is actually a giant pussy that nasa is specifically keeping greg away from uh-oh and he don't like that 